please watch to the end of this video because in my opinion, the end is better than the beginning. So I'm going to start with the official press release and then in the middle I go into like some fringy paranormal stuff. But then in the end, I go back to some more hard data and I think it's some stuff that everybody needs to know. And maybe everyone hasn't heard yet uh, about these incidents because there were more than one. Okay, the Association of Universities of Astronomy, they have made a press release. The facility is reopening. Uh, they have talked about the suspect and security threat and that type of thing. And I'm going to read that article, their press release, in just a minute. But I thought this was interesting, too, because at the same time, September 13th, when I read the press release in a minute, you'll see that the suspect wasn't taken into custody right away, and that's why they evacuated the area. So they say... So this is interesting that that same time, you know, a few days after the facility closed, here's this article from September 13th, that a hiker was found dead on White Sands National Monument Trail. And that is also under investigation. They have not released the cause of death. They, they won't say anything except it's under investigation. And here's a map to show you how close to the observatory that is. So here's Sunspot over here. And here's that trail. Here's White Sands National Monument. Now this says an hour away, but you can see that's going totally out of your way to find a road, you know, as the crow flies through, it's not that far at all. So all we really know is there was a body found here a few days after the evacuation here because of a particular suspect that they have also not named or given any information on. Okay, let's go to that article and I'll just read you exactly what they said. I guess the security threat is over and everybody's going back to work. Here's September 16th, 2018 press release from the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy. The aura statement about the status of the Sunspot Solar Observatory at Sacramento Peak, New Mexico. Aura has been cooperating with an ongoing law enforcement investigation of criminal activity that occurred at Sacramento Peak. During this time, we became concerned that a suspect in the investigation potentially posed a threat to the safety of local staff and residents. For this reason, Aura temporarily vacated the facility and ceased science activities at this location. So they seem to be talking about one suspect posing some sort of threat to the people in the area. The decision to vacate was based on the logistical challenges associated with protecting personnel at such a remote location and the need for expeditious response to a potential threat. Aura determined that moving the small number of on-site staff and residents off the mountain was the most prudent and effective action to ensure their safety. So I don't know if it was, I mean, I don't think it was anything like an explosion they were expecting. You know, there were reports of a strange smell, so it sounds more biological, but then that doesn't make any sense. And the mercury, and we heard about the mercury and all that sort of stuff, and I don't think anybody went up there with Geiger counters, citizen journalists. But I, I can't imagine if that was the case, if it was something about radiation or mercury or a biohazard of any kind, uh, be that some sort of terrorist activity or, or natural. If it was something like that, why would they let these people in there with drones and people walking in, looking in the trash cans and stuff? You know, if it was such a security risk that they evacuated several businesses and government facilities, even post offices and regular citizens and all of that because of this uh, threat. Why did, why was there such lax security that all these people were able to just sneak on the base and get these different types of footage? Okay, but here's where they say everybody's going back to work. No, nothing to see here. In light of recent developments in the investigation, we have determined there is no risk to the staff and Sunspot Solar Observatory is transitioning back to regular operations as of September 17th. Given the significant amount of pu publicity the temporary closure has generated and the consequent expectation of an un unusual number of visitors to the site, we are temporarily engaging a security service while the facility returns to a normal working environment. We recognize that the lack of communications while the facility was vacated was concerning and frustrating for some. However, our desire to provide additional information had to be balanced against the risk that, if spread at the time, the news would alert the suspect and impede the law enforcement investigation. That was a risk we could not take. And the rest of this is pretty much just about you know, the facility itself and what they've done over the years and the, the visitor center and stuff. 
So I'm guessing when they evacuated everybody, they didn't take the suspect into custody because this, they said that talking about it would alert the suspect. Uh, you know, I, what does that mean? Whatever they were so scared of that they evacuated two post offices, a town, and the observatory. Uh, they didn't think was scary enough that they should warn any of us while he was on the he or she was on the loose apparently for who knows I, I suppose they have him if everybody's going back to work so again very just a very ambiguous don't worry about it nothing to see here no no name of the suspect uh, no saying what he was he or she was suspected of uh, not, no information at all really just just an ambiguous thing saying. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Everybody's going back to work. So is the death of this hiker somehow related? Probably not. People have died there. You know, it was a 97 degree day in the desert. And, you know, those things have happened. I guess there was another uh, couple in 2015, uh, a French couple that also perished out there on those tra hiking trails. I mean, but it doesn't mean that he, it, it's not. It doesn't mean that, I mean, it very well could be. You know, there was one comment uh, about cryptids. Are cryptids involved when you're when you're closing down this remote area and it doesn't seem to be isolated just to the facility. It's several facilities and just the regular residents that are all tucked away back in this remote area at the same time that this hiker is found dead, that they won't, they won't discuss why. No one's given a cause of death. They didn't say... I don't know why they just wouldn't say heat stroke if it was heat stroke, but, and they just haven't released the cause of death. They just keep saying it's under investigation. So, you know, that makes people question, well, what's so weird if it, you know, if it was heat exhaustion, then that's pretty straightforward. So, you know, it makes people ask these questions. So when some of the people researching this and in my comment section and stuff mentioned, could it have something to do with cryptids? You know, I don't even think that's a stretch. I don't think it makes you crazy to want to ask questions like that done your due diligence of research and understanding the the world we live in then you know that like here's david palades he's an ex-police officer who writes all those missing 411 books and he's compiled mountains of evidence about hikers and hunters um dying under mysterious circumstances and how the authorities move in and they start this big cover-up and all of that kind of stuff i mean he's written several books about it with real evidence and real data. He's an ex-police officer. He's really compiled the evidence on these types of cases. And yeah, there are several where, yeah, somebody goes missing in the woods or they find the body and it's broken and mutilated in ways that make it very unexplainable. And the authorities move in and there seems to be some sort of task force, some sort of almost real life X-Files branch of the CIA that comes in and handles these types of things. And a lot of times those investigations do involve the FBI, they involve the Sheriff's Department, even the Forestry Departments and stuff like that, conservation. And there seems to be some sort of known chain of command because I did a video, here's MIB, Men in Black cover up of cryptid encounters. If you watch that video, there are several eyewitness testimonies and there are people in their own words, they're actually recording it in their own voice talking about when they had these cryptid encounters, how these agencies, that one guy he talks about, you know, he called the sheriff's department. He did, you know, who do you call when you see something like that in your backyard? Well, it was a small town and he trusted the sheriff. You know, he knew him. They grew up together and he called him and the sheriff believed him. And the sheriff said, well, let me, let me make some phone calls. And he did. And you know, within hours, these black vehicles started showing up down his little country road, and these military-like people started going out in the woods and, and handled it. And and there was a cover-up. There's, there's one guy in here who saw one in a public, in a state, state park. And he said these people showed up, and they took his cell phone, and he's, you know, he spent all his time fighting, trying to get his, the SIM card back of, for his cell phone, and all kinds of stuff. There's one lady who they took, she shot one of these cryptids in her backyard. And when she called the police for help, they came and they took her to jail. And she came back days later. And again, all of these, when the police came, then all, here come all this, this FBI, this sort of men in black, this secret shadow government agency came and started, inter started uh, intimidating 
their neighbors and the surrounding farmers told them, the farmers and stuff, to get off their own land because these military guys had gone into the woods and stuff. And when they went back there, what's going on? They're like, you know, get out of here. And it, they're like, I'm not getting out of here. This is my land you're on. What are you doing? And they, you know, they coerce them and intimidate them. And yeah, they took the woman off to jail and her three children had to stay with a neighbor. And when she came back, she wouldn't talk about it anymore. So anyway, all of those accounts are in this, this video here. MIB, cover up, cryptid encounters, men in black, dog man, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's simply not beyond the realm of reality that, you know, when mysterious deaths happen, especially out in New Mexico, they're famous for every, every type of cryptid there is. And, you know, the Native Americans out there, all of their stories, and then the, the New Mexico UFO crashes and uh, everything. So it's something to consider. You know, of course, I don't have any evidence. I'm not saying at all that this has anything to do with it. I'm just saying the official narrative that we usually get is so far removed from the truth that we don't just because they made a press release and they're like, everything's fine. People are going back to work, but we're going to hire security for the for a little while to make sure everything's smooth. They were so ambiguous, we, we don't have any idea. And it's suspicious that bodies were found on hiking trails nearby. And it was so dangerous for the citizens of the area to be here because of what this suspect was plotting or whatever, then what, why was it so easy for this guy to just walk right by the FBI and stuff, Black Hawk helicopters and everything, and just walk in here and take a picture of the trash can? So, I don't know. And there was another interesting comment made that made me think, uh, somebody had asked me, did I think that the reason the post offices were involved was because there's a tunnel system underneath, you know, from the offices of the, the government, the National Observatory, over to the post office. And that really made me think, because I used to own an old building. It was over 100 years old. It's a three-story building downtown. We shared a wall with the city hall uh, there in my hometown. And no joke, in the basement of this building was a tunnel system. And they had bricked it up in places. And the story goes, and it connected. It went under the streets. Yeah, it went over to City Hall and the courthouse. Uh, people said it went all the way down to the library. People who worked at the library blocks and blocks away said that, yeah, they had one in their basement too. And, and that was, it was pretty common. Everyone in town knew about them. When we asked about them and stuff, they said, oh, well, they're just left over from the Prohibition era when bootleggers would run all of the liquor around underground all over town and stuff like that. But there absolutely was a tunnel system. I, I know this firsthand. This isn't like somebody told me. that It was my building. It ran into the basement of my building. Now, I never got a pickaxe and, and dug the hole out big enough to crawl in there with a lantern and go check it out myself or anything. But I know that all of those buildings downtown, they did have entrances, whether it was City Hall or the public library or my building, which was a private building. So uh, these things absolutely do happen. Again, these are not questions that, are, you know, make you crazy to ask. And if you think that sounds far out conspiracy theory, that's ridiculous. This happens all the time. Uh, not just tunnels going from one building to another. Well, here's an article from just a couple weeks ago, August 23rd, 2018. Authorities find smuggling tunnel under Arizona Kentucky Fried Chicken. And they had a tunnel right up into the place of the tunnel to show you. It went across the border, too. This went all the way into Mexico, and it came up inside the kitchen of this Kentucky Fried Chicken. And the guy was, I guess, passing drugs, smuggling drugs and passing them up into the kitchen, and then they were being carried out in toolboxes, and it was discovered from a traffic stop. And so there's this massive tunnel that they built all the way into another country, into the kitchen of this KFC. So it's, Some it's Walter White shit there. The realm, uh, reality that <laughs> Straight up Walter White. And of course, the last thing that everybody's talking about is, is it a cover-up, all of this geomagnetic storm stuff? I noticed that a lot of the debunker videos, uh, that people are so proud of themselves. Uh, they put out these really condescending videos about, well, if they were hiding something, then how come here's graph after graph after graph of NASA. Here's NASA image this, NASA image that, NASA image this. And it's like, how is that evidence of anything? You know, did it ever occur to you that that's the entire theory? 
all of your evidence to debunk that this that they're covering up some sort of celestial event or they're covering up some sort of weather warfare comes from you showing me like 37 consecutive NASA images. Well, isn't that what NASA would do? Isn't that the very definition of a cover-up? What if, did it ever occur to you, if everything's coming from one agency, what if they're broadcasting fake information? What if those really are all CGI images? They are. And you're using, that's your entire... That's your entire mm -hmm. argument is, well, I have all these images. They've admitted they're CGI. That no, nothing was going on. There was nothing to see there. Nothing strange was going on. Yeah. But if some independent observatories maybe did pick something up, just like we as citizen journalists always are able to uncover tons of information that the mainstream won't touch with a thousand foot pole, just maybe some of these university observatories and smaller observatories and private observatories do occasionally pick up an image that NASA can't cover up. So you going in straight to NASA and going, oh, well, look, here's 37 other NASA NASA agencies that report nothing was going on with the sun. Well, to me, that <laughs> that doesn't prove anything. I get, I get where you're coming from, but at the same time, I don't trust NASA. That I have absolute proof they've lied to us a million times in the past. Is every image CGI? <laughs> You know, I don't know. Yes. I know some of the data is real, how they interpret it. No, I don't think they always interpret the data correctly when they make their composite CGI uh, presentations. But would I expect, as this, as the event horizon approaches and these things start to happen, would I expect them to be broadcasting fake images to keep people from panicking? Sure, of course I would. So, to me, that's just oh, like, yeah, yeah. Eh. you know, you can believe what you want to believe. Uh, this is from a channel, let's see, where does he start talking, I think it's right about here. This is from a channel, uh, Theoria Apophysis. This guy, he does camera videos and philosophy and stuff, and apparently he covered this as well. I wanted to play this really quick and then comment on, and just make it more clear what's really going on. Check out this list. Now these are solar observatories and uh, cams in Australia, Chile, Spain, two in Hawaii, and one in Pennsylvania. All of these went down at the exact same time as the solar observatory in New Mexico. And are they still down? Well, let's take a look. I uh, updated these just about 10 minutes ago. Oh, here's the one in Hawaii. Oh, that cam's been shut down, solar observatory. Okay, this one's uh, been uh, shut down. This one, the cam is offline, maybe due to network or hardware failure. So that one's down in Hawaii. This uh, solar uh, uh, cam is down. This one is also down. It can't find it. And uh, here's the sixth one down, unauthorized, can't find the webcam. So all six of these went down at the exact same time and are still down. In Australia, Chile, Spain, two in Hawaii and Pennsylvania. These are all uh, solar space cams that went down. And uh, this is SOHO. This is on NASA's own website. It's on uh, nasacom at nasa.gov forward slash data forward slash NASA, the deceiver. HTML. This is SOHO. This is the Solar and the Heliospheric Observatory. We saw you like all. Telescope for looking at the sun. And interestingly enough, they will tell you that, ooh, let us see, we are updating the code infrastructure provided to the SOHO, and we expect the work to take several weeks. In other words, the uh, live feed stream from the SOHO solar uh, telescope has been shut down. National Observa Solar Observatory, this is the one that was shut down, right? Well, interestingly... The Gemini Observatory was also shut down in the very exact same manner as the one we keep talking about, the National Solar or Sunspot Observatory in New Mexico. So this one's in New Mexico that was shut down. This one also was shut down in the same manner, evacuated. And this one is in Hawaii, all right? So that's very interesting to note is that you have actually two events happening, not one. And they were also given for the uh, the exact same reason for the closure. 
that voice you just heard for a couple of seconds, that was God Rules channel. He's awesome. Please go over there and subscribe to him if you haven't, because he's got some really awesome content. As always, his link and the other link and all the links, credit links in this video will all be below in the description box. So if you know anything about observatories, they're not all pointed in the same exact direction. They're not all located in one city or something. They're all over the Earth. And they're, so they're all pointing in different directions, from different directions, and they're not even watching the same thing. Some of them are watching this part of quote-unquote space. Some of them are watching another part. Some of them are only directly at the sun, and they don't watch space at all. They only collect data, solar data. And other observatories aren't observing the sun at all. They're observing other parts of the atmosphere. And you know, we all live in different places. We understand, like when we had the August 21st solar eclipse, no, it wasn't seen the same way from everywhere. I was here like right at the center point where it crossed near Carbondale, Illinois, but people in Alaska didn't see it the same way. People in other countries, it didn't eclipse at all. So you would expect that if the shutdowns were related to some sort of object, like I covered in the last video, albeit a comet, an asteroid, this planetary system we're always talking about, it, something like that, then not every single observatory is going to pick it up. And you guys know I don't believe in coincidences. The fact that the observatory in New Mexico and the observatory in Hawaii simultaneously came in with the feds and evacuated the entire area because of some vagabond suspect or something that sounds suspicious to me i mean i don't know there's no way we can really know but what we do know is that we are experiencing i still haven't got that video up the fail is thin i can't get to, i have so many of these in the in the pipeline that i just can't get all the edits done and get it put together now but in, in that video the veil is thin right now you know i talk about all these anomalies that i'm experiencing personally and cell phone coverage and satellites being out and all that uh but we know by the different graphs that I have shown already in past videos that there has been a burst, that there is like the Earth being a capacitor, that we are ejecting energy, and these things are happening. And then they're, they're forewarning us, northern lights possible across Michigan as the uh, geomagnetic storm hits and stuff that this is supposed to hit. Now, of course, I believe in geomagnetism. In fact, in lieu of gravity, I believe in buoyancy, I believe in atomic weight and mass, and I believe in magnetism. I believe that's what it is. So, of course, I believe in geomagnetic storms. But all of this, these northern lights, the aurora borealis and all of that, I don't believe it is at all what they tell us that it is. And I believe that this is evidence of interdimensional interference. As the veil literally bends, as Christ, not just a celestial object, a celestial being, approaches and as far as cgi you know look at these images does it escape everybody that this is the image of the electromagnetic fields you know of earth and stuff that they say because we're traveling this way and blah 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 doesn't it it's a spider it's a spider they've made it a spider it's like those tarantulas you see you people who have been terrorized with night terrors and shadow people and stuff you'll know what i'm talking about those giant tarantulas, when you have those demonic attacks and, you know, you see those tarantulas on your walls and in your house and floating in the air and stuff while you're asleep, when you're in that altered state of consciousness, those theta brain waves, and, and you can see the spiritual realms, you know, some people call it astral projection and stuff like that. But anyway, th does it escape everybody that the images that they, I mean, because there aren't any actual pictures of this, but this is what NASA tells us, right? It's a spider. The Earth is actually a giant spider, energetically, it is a giant spider. And of course we know all of the math they give us for everything, to the, the speed of Earth's orbit, to the curvature, to the tilt of the axis, it's all 666, right? The globe's orbit is supposed to be 66.6 mile per hour curvature, and uh, in one mile squared is 0.666, the axis tilt 66.6 degrees. So, you know... Believe what you want to choose your source. When, when I'm sourcing out information, I go to my source, which is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And that's where I get my discernment. Now, if NASA is your source and you're going to throw that up as that's all your evidence, you know, that's on you. But that stuff doesn't work on me anymore. So when I see this Aurora Borealis effect, it, it means something a lot more to me. 
I've made videos about it here like this, the Bermuda Triangle, Philadelphia Experiment, Green Fog, Tornado Mysteries and Dimensions. I talk about that, about the color changes in the atmosphere when these different electromagnetic interdimensional phenomena happen. And this is kind of personal to me because this is something that the Lord showed me. And at the time, I didn't have any idea what it meant. I didn't know what I was seeing, what I was looking at. Now, as the skies already start to change and the clouds are red almost every night already, and we're seeing these atmospheric changes that they're like, oh, northern lights are all of a sudden, they're not at the North Pole, they're over Michigan. trying to explain this stuff away now I can make sense of it but in this end time dream the Lord showed me it's the only one I've ever had about UFOs ever but it was it was completely dark out and all of the stores were closed some sort of major event had happened where people had essentially quit going to work and so everything was very strange and people were talking about is this the end is this really the end and the skies I looked up and the skies were like that aurora borealis only they were like pink and red and you know some blues real a lot of magenta mixed in there and stuff and it was just I'd never seen night skies like that ever I still haven't seen night skies like that ever in person anyway but also amongst that were these UFOs darting about. Like I couldn't see any crafts or anything, but the orbs that used to look like stars to us, they were like zigzagging and moving around. They, they were moving and they were, they were obviously UFOs and they were darting around. So, and we were just looking up. I mean, they were so far away, you know, it looked like not quite as far as we see the stars, but you know, they were really far away. It wasn't looking at crafts or anything. We were just looking at these lights zigzagging around, not, nothing like any conventional aircraft would do. And it was like the cloaking had been removed and the whole sky was full of these, these lights, the, these crafts. And so, yeah, that was the thing. So I don't know if it was some sort of electromagnetic pulse that took out everything, including all of the cloaking devices or whatever, but the, the atmosphere was different and we could clearly see that there were crafts in the sky. And even then I, I was talking to the other people there discussing, is this it? Is this really like, is this the end times? And the one guy's like, my mom doesn't believe it. She, you know, this is just this and that and the other. So even then at that point, in the revelation there were still people who were like oh no it's just whatever the official narrative is but here's some more really important data about these microwave pulses that are coming from it seems to be man-made coming from earth not a not an atmospheric change or a magnetic storm or anything and they're clearly targeted they're not just happenstance or random all over the mimic uh, the most of them seem to be targeted directly at the hurricanes, even the hurricane on the East Coast, Hurricane Florence, even Hurricane Lane over Hawaii. So this is causing people to think that all of this talk about solar observatories and the magnetic storm and all of that is all part of the same cover up to keep us from looking at this weather war, that there's a man made high tech weather war going on. And they need an excuse to cover up these anomalies that people are seeing, these electromagnetic pulses, these microwave pulses. So, you know, a lot of people believe that not only are all the NASA images faked, but even these shutdowns and stuff are faked because they want the citizen journalists, they want the truther community, they want to control us. So they want to move our attention to where, where they want our attention. It's like a magician, how they do an illusion. They're look over here, watch this hand, when they're doing something else with the other hand and that's, and you miss it. So it's a trick. So some people think this has absolutely nothing to do with planet X or any sort of objects or anything that might've happened with the sun or anything like that. They believe all of that is just to draw our attention from this, this type of data that's out there. I believe both can be going on. I mean, that's what the Bible says. It says there will be wars and rumors of wars, but it also says there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. 
It also says there will be asteroids or meteors crashing into the oceans at the same time that it says that earthquakes will increase. So I believe that there are natural events going to be taking place at the very same time as these wars, these high-tech weather wars and stuff. So I think it could be both, you know, but we'll see. Time will tell. But here's a few of these clips. At the storm directly at midnight, the first of a, a few pulses. But as soon as it hit the storm, watch it as the storm's coming up through right here at midnight. It completely wraps around the taller clouds, decimates the taller clouds, weakens them to where they're stripped away by that wind shear. We're going to look at, this was last night at the same time. Notice I've got the air. I'm sorry about the timestamp being cut off there, but that's exactly on midnight at the 25th. So you see two five and four zeros. Now, that's the exact time that pulse wrapped around the storm, and you can see it start to uh, dissipate. Watch also put out a video of how the same thing happened over Hurricane Florence. And we all know how it immediately dropped from a Category 5 hurricane all the way down to a Category 1 just right before it made landfall on the East Coast. So it, it, it begs the question. I know a lot of people want to generalize and say everybody in power or everybody in the know or everybody who has these technologies are all evil. But this begs the question, is this evidence that they're not? Are there, are there white hats? Because both of these storms that were being pushed over the United States territories drastically de-intensified at the very last moment. And here's several good catches by uh, Florida Marquee, Dabu77. I'll put the link below. I'm not going to play any clips. Uh, strange series of anomalies stretching across the Pacific Ocean. And and these are just several good catches off of Mimic. Now, this one you can see goes out in every direction. This pulse is going out in every single direction. It seems to be emanating from somewhere in the ocean around Hawaii or actually from one of the Hawaiian islands. And it's going in both directions. But we know this isn't just going on in the Pacific Ocean because I just showed you the clip about it being aimed directly at the hurricanes on the East Coast, too. And likewise, this going over here toward Japan, Japan has just been beat the heck out of by typhoons recently. So is there is there a weather war going on? Is, are we at, in a high tech war? Because look what it, Hawaii's been going through. And you know, Hawaii is strategically placed. That's why we had Pearl Harbor during World War II. That's why we had the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor because they wanted to take over the base in Hawaii. They need Hawaii as a sort of launching pad. Hawaii being close enough to the West Coast. You know, North Korea covets Hawaii. Japan was the one who attacked Hawaii uh, in World War II first. So really all of Asia. Russia tends to covet Alaska and Cuba, you know, to come at us through Florida and down through uh, the Northwest. But the Asians, Asia, Japan, China, North Korea, they, they covet Hawaii, which brings to mind a couple of things. I know over the years, I've heard several other people get dreams and visions about catastrophes like tsunamis and stuff hitting Hawaii and wiping it clean. Like we saw last year with the smaller islands and the big hurricanes that it literally almost wiped the civilization off of it. And then following those events, it was invaded by North Korea or Asians, things like that. So, you know, now looking at what's going on, those prophetic dreams and visions that I saw people have five years ago, and I even sent them to people that I knew who lived in Hawaii or had children living in Hawaii and stuff like that because I took them that seriously. So now all these years later to see this happening, it's worth making a mental note of. And you can see here back in June, I put up, I had a flash vision, and I've only had a couple of those in my whole life. And it was about this celestial being, this angel or whatever, pouring out this bowl onto the United States and Japan. So when I see this specific band of frequency attacks or microwave pulses being sent directly at the United States and directly at Japan from somewhere out here in the Pacific Ocean, uh, yeah, it makes me wonder, is this it?
Japan's been experiencing a series of earthquakes, too, large earthquakes, four, five, sixes. And, uh, you know, what Hawaii went through and all of that. And the West Coast is lighting up, too. I just want to close out with this. I'm sure a lot of you know that the vigilant Christian is being targeted. He's about to be taken down. Uh, he woke up and he's blocked in all countries, almost every single video. You know, he has over half a million subscribers. And here's just one of his notices that legal action against him, uh, you know, about his Bible burning in China video and all of his videos. He said there were over, he got over 200 of these. So he won't be posting on that channel anymore. And that's what they want is to take, a, take away our reach. You know, they took down high impact flicks. They took down SGT report. They took out Alex Jones, whether you like him or you don't. To remove him as a human, he's a non-human now because you don't like his style or whatever. You don't like what he's saying. Uh, you know, this is this is Nazi Germany stuff. This is what we are well into the purge. So you see, they've gone beyond just taking people off social media platforms. They even contacted his servers and tried to get even websites, getting erased from the entire Internet of Things. But anyway, they've gone beyond just making excuses and trying to punish us financially and all of that sort of thing. It's full on. If you don't believe that, look at my subscription list. Look at this. These are my subscriptions. I wake up this morning, all of these channels, all my top channels are gone. They've all been removed. You can just click on them. Look. This account's been terminated. Well, this account's been terminated due to multiple or severe violations. Let's see what's going on with this one. Oh, account's been terminated. Huh, everything I subscribe to has been terminated. Been terminated. This account's been terminated. So, um, it's happening, and I don't know how, how much longer we're going to be able to get the gospel out on the internet, not just on social media, on the internet at all. Uh, but it, this thing's coming to an end. So, so I'm asking you guys, please support our work. Mario needs an attorney. Some of these people need an, need an attorney. If you're a Christian attorney, please step up and do what God prepared you and called you to do. And if you're somebody out there that has been financially blessed, please support our work. You see, last month, I wasn't able to get any videos up. I'm a single mother. I work three jobs. I don't get any child support. And I am trying to. I'm working 16 hours a day, sometimes on two hours sleep, and still trying to do the ministry because I know that this channel isn't long for the world. I mean, here's the evidence. Here's the evidence. And I, I did a video on it, but again, they're in the pipeline. It takes forever to get all these edited and narrated and get them all up. But I did a video showing mine, too, that after the Isaac Cappy thing, that's when the purge started on my channel. They went through and did the same exact thing. Just page after page of my videos demonetized. And that's when I had to go back to work last month in a third job uh, to pay the bills. Because overnight, my income was cut down to nothing. My YouTube channel made like $100, $120 uh, in 30 days. So that doesn't even pay my internet bill. And, you know, I have to, God's given me a lot of responsibility uh, in the ministry to try and, and reach the lost, but he's also given me the responsibility to raise this this soul that I have, which is my son, and I have to keep a roof over his head, and I have to keep him fed, and I have to, you know, educate him, I have to do all this stuff, so if there is anybody out there, you know, I know people are, oh, I ask for money, whatever, Too it's too late, we're, we're too far along in the game for me to bicker about that stuff, you guys know that every video, I don't have a little trailer that says, please donate, please click here, please do that. I never ask for money. I think twice, maybe two or three videos in 10 years on YouTube have I brought it up. And those two were because of the lawsuit to take my son. And it, that was, again, the persecution saying, oh, I thought he was a prophet of God and I must be schizophrenic because of my YouTube channel and all this. So, uh, yes, a lot of people contributed. Oh, God bless you. Thank you, guys. The court case is almost over two long years. Not over yet, but we have been through the uh, settlement conference, and it is coming to an end. And we beat them. The Lord prevailed in the end. Anyway, the point is I don't advertise for donations on every video, and I don't even have a Patreon. But I do have the ministries go fund me and PayPal me down in the description box. So if there is anybody who feels led, don't do it if you don't feel led. But if there is anybody who feels led that they want to be a part of what I'm doing, because it's just me. I don't have a team of anybody. It's just me. So if, if you want to contribute to that work and buy, talk about buying time, you will buy some of my time so that I don't have to work three jobs and I can spend more time on this online ministry while they still allow us to do so. 
So anyway, if anybody does contribute, I sure appreciate it. And if you don't, I sure appreciate you anyway. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and yours. Damning, huh?